If you have seen my last video about the Stern Gerlach experiment, you know that I plan to recreate it. And my original plan was to use this cryo pump in combination with this compressor right there to get down to the appropriate vacuum. The problem is that this pump is really big and quite loud and it probably has to run for a few hours or maybe even a day or two to get down to the required pressure. And if you have seen my equipment tour video, you know that I now have a turbo molecular pump. I don't know yet if it works. I think it works, but I will test it in today's video. And if it works, I can disassemble this here and fit the turbo molecular pump to it. This will make it a lot smaller. I can, for example, use the aluminum rack here to mount controlling units for the pressure gauges and the turbo molecular pump. And it will be a lot quieter. But for that, before I start disassembling it, and then I notice that the turbo molecular pump doesn't even work, I will now test it and see if I can get down to a pressure that I need. Here you can see the inside of the turbo molecular pump. It looks clean. I honestly don't want to press my luck and open it up, so I will keep it that way. I don't see any debris in there. And I will use this K40 flange to connect my vacuum system. This is the setup I want to use to test the turbo molecular pump. I have two Pirani vacuum gauges. The first one is this analog one and it measures the pressure in my roughing cycle. So the roughing pump um, is monitored by this Pirani gauge. And I have another Pirani gauge right here that is connected to the um, tiny vacuum chamber that is being evacuated by the turbo molecular pump and I get the reading from this uh, vacuum gauge to my homemade controller right here. <laughs> I clamped the turbo molecular pump in a lab stand that is mounted to the table. It is solid. Um, it's probably not the smartest idea to mount something that spins at over 50,000 rpm like this, but I currently don't have any other way. And before I build a mount that mounts to my aluminum stand here, I have to test if this pump works. So I will begin to evacuate the uh, system with my roughing pump. And when it's down to a pressure of 0.02 millibars, um, I will start the turbo molecular pump and I will just uh, look for any weird noises, if I get any errors on the controller here, or if it works. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, we are now down to 0.02 millibars and I will now try to turn on the turbo molecular pump. Okay, we have power on our controller unit. The fan here is running. So I will now try to press start. As you can see, it's accelerating. And you can see that the pressure is dropping sharply. That's great. The pressure in the four line pump has risen slightly. Okay, I've gotten a fail here. I'm not sure why. I will have to check the manual and see what could cause this failure here. Okay, I have installed another pressure gauge at my four line vacuum pump because apparently according to the manual one reason for the failure could be that the pressure in the four line vacuum pump circle is too high. So I will now open up this vacuum valve on top here and see what the pressure gauge here reads. So that should be low enough. Another thing I noticed is that when I close this valve here, um, watch the pressure gauge that is uh, attached to the vacuum chamber.
you can see it rising steadily so I think I have a leak somewhere in my vacuum system I think what could be responsible for my leak is this dirty um, uh, ceiling uh, surface here so I will clean it up and see if it helps. It won't go away with isopropyl alcohol and it won't go away with acetone. I may also take off these screws here to see if it's the ISO, I think it's an ISO 60 flange right here. That doesn't seal properly but at first I want to try to clean up this area here. Yes, I'm going to take off those clamps here, so I don't risk dropping anything in here while cleaning it. And I can at the same time check if the seal here is okay. The o-ring looks good. And the seating surface here also looks good. This way you can at least get a better look at the innards of this turbo molecular pump. As you can see it's basically a jet engine that is powered by an electric motor. You have these veins that spin at, I looked it up, this pump spins at uh, 75,000 rpm so quite a lot of speed. And while I'm cleaning the seating surface on the K40 flange, I'm going to cover it with aluminum foil to make sure nothing gets in there. Okay, I spent quite a lot of time trying to clean this flange here. And as you can see, there's still some residue visible, but I think I have to take off the first um, layer of metal to get rid of it, because seriously, I yeah, I, I scrubbed it with a lot of pressure, I tried water, isopropyl alcohol, acetone, nothing worked. I will try it this way and see if it helped. So let's attach this ISO 60 flange back to the turbo molecular pump. The first thing I want to test is if this seal here is the problem or this um, ISO 60 flange. So I'm just going to attach a reducing coupler, so KF40 to KF16 and attach a vacuum gauge there and then see if this whole piece here holds vacuum. So what I will do now is to evacuate um, the whole system, also the turbo pump, and then I'm going to use this vacuum valve right here to close off the turbo pump from the rest of the system. And with this vacuum gauge right here, I can measure if the pressure rises um, after I close the vacuum valve, and that way I know if there is any leak um, either in this flange right here or this connection right here or this on top here. But I used this before, and I don't think there is a leak here. But that's the thing we're going to test now. I have spent quite a lot of time to figure out where my leak was and honestly I didn't find it. But what I found was interesting is that if I um, use a uh, end cap on this hose here, I'm still having a leak. Um, so I'm not sure I will try it again. I changed the T-piece on top here to be able to fit my ionization gauge because I noticed that the Pirani gauge doesn't work um, when I turn on the turbo pump. The ionization gauge um, fits into this piece here and there is an o-ring inside here if you can see it. And you just um, mount it like that, you just push it in there. And then you screw it down here and the two pieces get pressed together and press together the o-ring which seals against the surface right here so the metal surface 
Yeah, I will try to turn it on again. So I will let the roughing pump run for a while until my pressure is down to yeah, around 0 0.02 millibars. Then I will turn on the turbo pump again and we will see if everything worked. I will now try to turn the turbo molecular pump on once again and see what happens. Okay, it's accelerating, so we should see the pressure dropping, and it is dropping. Um, yeah, but I feel like we will get a um, fail message again, but we will see. It looks really promising. You can see that the pressure in the four-line pump is rising a bit as the pressure in our vacuum chamber drops. I think the pump is faster than last time, I can definitely hear it. Oh, the controller just shows normal, so it's up to speed, it's at 75,000 RPM. That's great. And I think my Pirani gauge... Um, this one right here just stops working at those pressures because as you can see it doesn't drop anymore. It does make some weird noises. I'm not sure if you can hear it. it sounds like something is like metal is rubbing on metal. I'm not sure if that's a normal noise. I never used a turbo molecular pump before, but I don't think it's normal. Do you hear that? I'm not sure if you can hear it um, over the noise of my roughing pump, but it makes weird noises. I will let this pump for a while and see how low the pressure gets. It now has been running for about 15 minutes and I'm going to turn it off now um, because I'm not sure about that noise and I don't really want to risk damaging anything. The pressure, as you can see, is constantly falling. Um, but of course it takes longer as we get um, to lower pressures. And maybe if some of you knows what this noise is, I suspect maybe it's just some coil whining um, rather than you know, some metal of the veins rubbing against the outer uh, housing. Yeah, maybe somebody, someone of you know more about that. Let's turn off the turbo molecular pump first. And it will probably take quite a long time to decelerate. I heard that they can take about 50 minutes to get to a speed that, um, yeah, to stop. And as the pump slows down, we of course can see that the pressure is rising again. Let's also turn off the ionization gauge. So the turbo pump decelerated. I turned off the roughing pump and um, let air into the system. All in all, I think it was a very successful run. The turbo pump worked, the ionization gauge worked. The only problem I see is the weird noise that the turbo pump makes. I never worked with them before, so I don't know if that's normal. As I said before, I don't know it's a, if it's a coil whining or if there is something rubbing inside. So if you have any information about that, let me know. I would love to know if that's normal or if I should be worried. Yeah, that was today's video. So I think I can disassemble the cryo pump right now, sorry for the mess, I can disassemble the cryo pump, use it for liquefying air or oxygen or other gases. I even thought about with Elias from Elias experiments to liquefy hydrogen with it, so maybe that's something for a future video. The thing I now have to think about is how to mount my turbo pump to the rest of the system because yeah, it, it's, it's designed around the cryo pump. And that's the main problem now. But that's something for a future video. Thank you a lot for watching.